In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a frequency table in Excel and then display that data as a bar graph and a pie chart. So let's use the data from uh, example, example 1 and table 5.1. Um, this is uh, some data regarding essay grades for 25 students. All right, so we can just start typing this in. So let's make a column for the grade and a column for the frequency. And then we'll also make ones for the relative frequency and cumulative frequency. Okay, now I'm just typing those in and then arrowing back and forth on my keyboard between the different cells in Excel. Uh, you can also just click on a cell and then click up here and, and edit. So if, if you click on a cell, you can um, type anything you want into that cell. Okay, so let's make this look a little better. Um, let me just adjust the width of these columns. And if you hover between the two columns and double click, then it will auto fit to uh, the size of whatever you've typed there. Okay, so filling in some of this data, we have uh, grades A through F. Okay, and then the frequencies, let me enter those in as well. Okay, um, we'd also like to see some totals. So I'll make a row for that. And uh, rather than adding this up by hand, you can just use the, the sum feature in Excel. All right, so if you highlight all of these, and I think if you just click and drag down, nope. Okay. So highlight the things you want to add. Or, uh, no, sorry. Let's do it this way. Okay, click on the cell where you want the sum, and then uh, at the top, click on the formulas tab in Excel, right? And then I think you can do auto sum. Yes, okay, and then that will add uh, all of the numbers in that column. Um, if it didn't get the column correct, if it highlighted the wrong cells or something, it, or if you wanted a, a different sum, uh, then here you can just enter in from what cell to what cell. So right now this is, is saying that in this cell, uh, this cell will equal the sum of the numbers from cell C3 through C7. And you can edit that if that's not what you want. And then just click enter or click off of that. Oops. Click enter. And then that um, completes the sum. Okay, relative frequencies. We want to calculate the, um, the percentages here, all right, so each frequency divided by the total frequency. All right, so for the first one, we can write, uh, we want this cell to equal, okay, I want to divide 4 by 25. So again, you could do all of these by hand, um, but it is faster to have the, the formula do this for you. All right, so let's divide cell C3 okay, by uh, cell C8, okay? And then if I just type C8, this will work for this cell, but what it's gonna what's gonna happen when we go to the next one is that it will divide the next cell C4 by the next one down C9. So what I want to do is fix this C8 so that all of these relative frequencies are divided by 25. All right. So if you put a dollar sign in in front of the C, it's gonna fix it as column C, and then if you put a dollar sign in front of the 8, it fixes it um, on that cell uh, C8. Okay. And then I think, I think this is the one that you can just fill down. So let me try this. If you click the bottom right corner of the cell and drag down, all right, that should work. Okay, so what it's done, now you can click on any one of these cells to, to make sure that it's calculating it correctly. So now it's taking um, cell C4, so now it moved down to the, the 7, and it's dividing it by the total C8, okay, and so forth. And then it's, it's nice to practice with one um, in the textbook so that you can just check and make sure that this matches up with what it's supposed to be. Okay. Now these frequencies are displaying as decimals. Um, so if we wanted these as percentages, you can just highlight, click and highlight all of these. Right? And then in the home tab, if you go over to uh, the, the options for number, you'll see a little percent symbol and you can display those as percents instead of, instead of decimals. Okay, um, for cumulative frequency, all right, so we want to 
uh, just to kind of add as we go. All right, so what we want to do is um, set the first cumulative frequency to just this four. All right, so we would write equals C3. Right, and then the next one I want to I want to add. All right, so the cumulative frequency would be four plus seven. So I want this to equal C3 right, plus, and then I'm going to do actually just the previous total. All right, so I want to add E3, what came before, and this will save some steps as well. Okay. And then, oops, sorry. That's not what I wanted. Not C3, C4. Okay, so I want to add the new frequency to the one that came before. Okay, and then same thing, so I want to add, and now I think you can fill down as well, so let's try this. Okay, nope. There we go. Okay, so this first cell is starting things off, all right, with this is just the, the cell that it is, okay then this next one is the formula which is saying take the new frequency and then add the previous cumulative frequency. So if you take this 11, that formula, and then click and drag down into the cells below, then that will fill them in. All right, so for example, this one, this is C5, the new frequency 9, plus E4, which is the previous cumulative frequency. Okay. And then finally for the total here, uh, I don't want to add up all of these. I just want this to be the straight total. All right, so if I just write equals C8, okay, then that pulls in the total from over here. Okay, uh, if, you, if you want a frequency table but you don't feel like learning all of the different um, formulas and things like that, you could just type all of this in by hand as well, and then you would still be able to generate um, bar graphs and um, pie charts based on this. All right, um, another thing you might want to do is format this as a table. So if your goal is just to make a bar graph or a pie chart, maybe you don't care what this looks like, but if you want this to look kind of nice, um, you can select all of this and then format it as a table. All right, so now I'm still in the Home tab of Excel and you can see this option Format as Table. Right? And then you've got all these different options to, to pick what you want your table to look like. Okay, so I'll pick one. I kind of like the uh, the headings here um, highlighted. All right, and then this is just confirming that the data for the table is in these cells. All right, so this is saying we're we're going to go from cell B two, which is this top table, okay, down to the corner E eight down here. And you'll notice the dollar signs that it's it's fixing those specific cells. Okay, um, telling it my table has headers just makes clear that these this top line is um, is a header. And there it is. Okay, let's turn this into a bar graph. Alright, so let's start with uh, let's start with the grade and the frequency. Okay, so you want to highlight those two columns and then let's go to insert, right? And then there's a list of recommended charts that you can use. Right? Or if you don't see what you want there, then you can just click this little this little arrow to see all of the different chart options okay, and click all charts. So for example, here's um, the bar charts and uh, we can take a look at the different options there. So 3D options as well as 2D. Okay, so let's go with a column and then I, I don't want a stacked column and I don't necessarily want 3D so I'm just going to go with this uh, clustered column option. All right, so there it is. And uh, this looks pretty good so far. So I have my grades along the bottom, frequencies along the side here. Okay, and then of course the, the bars for each one. Um, I don't like that it's given the chart the title of frequency. Right, so instead I'm gonna double click here to edit this. And then you can just um, make that title whatever you want. So let's call this essay grades. All right. Uh, but what I would like to see is, is the grades and frequencies um, labeled on the axes. All right, so there are, you can see these three buttons along the side of your chart here. All right, so this plus sign lets you add things to the chart like titles, 
uh, grid lines, labels, things like that. Okay, the second one lets you set the styles and the colors for everything. And then this, this third one is filters. So if you wanted things to be um, invisible, okay, like we could get rid of the frequencies or, or things like that. Okay, so you can toggle things on and off. Um, same with names if you want to toggle the, the names on and off. Okay, so what's missing? Well, I would like to see uh, the labels on these axes. So I'm going to go to the plus sign to add something. And I'm going to add the axis titles. Right? And notice there's a little arrow here I can add. Um, it doesn't have to be both. Maybe you just want the horizontal axis okay, or just a vertical axis. Right? Or you can do both. Uh, I've got the chart table, and then I'm looking to see if there's anything else I'd like. Um, data labels. So if it's if it's not very clear, if you have a lot of these and you can't really see how high up these go, or, or maybe they're between, like between three and four, right? In some cases, then clicking um, data labels will will put all of the the exact values on the top of each bar. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I like these grid lines. Um, you can add in. Uh, more grid lines if you want the vertical ones for some reason, or if you wanted smaller lines in between, okay, so you can play with those things. Uh, there's a legend, so if you had more than one bar, okay, you can do uh, a legend to see what the different colors represent. All right, and then let's edit these titles. So down here, these are the grades. Okay. And then along the side, we have the frequency. This one's always a little weird. You have to type sideways. And there it is. All right. Um, if you want to change colors, you can play around with that. I think I'll let you explore that on your own. You can select um, different color palettes. Or over here, it'll pull up an option to change the fill colors, the border colors, if you wanted your bars to be, um, you know, orange instead, then you can switch from blue to orange, and so forth. Okay, same thing with the, the text font, you can play around with that. Alright, um, if you if you look in your textbook reading, there's there's another figure, figure 5-3, which shows the relative frequencies along this right hand side. All right, so let's talk about how to add that because that would be kind of a nice option. So one way to do this is uh, when we originally selected the data, you could actually select um, three columns, the grade, the frequency, and the relative frequency. Okay, um, But if you didn't do that and now you want to go back and do that, then click on your, your bar graph right, and then up in the chart tools, right, click um, uh, yeah, click design and then click uh, select data, right? So right now it's, this is telling me it's pulling the data from these cells, right, that are selected. And what I want to do is just expand it to also include this relative frequency column. So what I need to do is tell it to go not to, down, not to cell C7, but I want it to go to all the way to D7. Okay, so where it says C, get rid of that and make that a D and hit OK. All right, so now uh, you'll notice that what it did is it added these relative frequencies um, actually as secondary bars here, right? And I don't want that. I want these as labels along the side. Okay, so if you click on that, whoops. Okay, so once that's, once that's selected, then um, over on the right here, okay, we can format this series, right? So uh, what I want to do is, uh, so right now I'm, I'm, I've selected the relative frequency, right? And then I'm going to click the series options. And what I want to do is switch this from being plotted on the primary axis down here to being plotted on the secondary axis or going vertically. Okay, and there it is. All right, so now you'll notice that everything lines up um, and it hasn't changed the bars or anything like that, but it's just written these numbers. So now A has a relative frequency of 16 and you can see um, the bar for A, it's got a frequency of four 
and then over here that matches that does match up with 16. Okay, so these have um, been filled in in the correct spots so that like a grade of C has its frequency and also its correct relative frequency. Um, now, I'm also, I would also like to label this so we know that it's relative frequency, right? So that's a, um, this is a label thing. Okay, and uh, I wanna do, let's add um, an axis title. Okay, and so now when you scroll over, now we have this secondary vertical option. Okay, now that we have a secondary vertical axis, so if you click that, okay, now that gives us a spot to type in the title here, and we can do relative frequency. And that's it. Okay, let me show you one more thing, which is um, how to make a pie chart. All right, so what I want to do is take these grades and their, uh, let's do relative frequencies or percentages, All right? So I'm going to collect or select these. And then if I also want to select um, these percentages, I'm going to click control on the keyboard. Um, if you have a Mac, I think you may need command. I'm not sure about that, uh, but try one of those options. So hit control and then you can click and select those options and it skips over this frequency in the middle. All right, and then we want to insert a chart. And now I do see a, a 2D pie chart as one of the, um, the recommended options. So I'll click that and then we can start editing. So the title, let's do essay grades again. Okay. And then I think it might be nice to just put the, the labels A, B, C, D, and, and F um, on the pie chart itself rather than a legend. All right, so let's start adding some things. So let's add data labels, okay? And then we can change the position. I think it looks fine the way it is. Uh, let's see, over in uh, this format option here, let's look at, let's look at options for the data labels, okay? And if you click text options, uh, nope, that's not it. Here we go. Okay, so we want the label options. And right now it's showing just the value that those percentages. Um, so what I want to also do is is the category name. Okay, A, B, C, A, B, C, D, and F. And I don't like that it has that comma there. So I'm actually going to get rid of the value and click percentage. And then it just displays a little bit nicer there. Um, and then I don't really want the legend there, so I'm just going to click it and hit delete, and then that will disappear. Okay, and then same as before, you can click and play around with different um, styles and colors if you like, but I think that, that looks pretty good for at least a basic chart here.